likely that even the people that they're talking to, that they're speaking to, aren't Christians themselves. We're told in Luke eleven twenty nine, 29, Jesus says that when the crowds were increasing, he began to say, this generation is an evil generation. It seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So if you really want to see some signs, a real, a true sign, a real wonder, a move of the Lord, well, what you'll be given is the fact that Jesus Christ died and rose. That's the sign that you need. That's the only thing that you need to look forward to that you need to look for. But for some of these people, that's not enough. As a matter of fact, just his word is not enough. See, so guys, a real Christian values the word of God. They treat it as life, as breath. In Psalm 119, we're told, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the rules of your mouth. In, in the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all richness. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Now, the difference with these people versus the psalmist here is that they really don't place value in the word of God. As a matter of fact, the word of God is not enough. It's simply insufficient for them. They want more. No, sitting there reading from Genesis all the way through Revelations and just finding the gems, the spiritual gems that are placed there, that's not enough. I want more, God. What you're offering, that's not for me. That's how you know that this person is not a Christian. And even the people who are listening to him, the people who are eating up what he's saying, they don't care about the word of God. They care about themselves. They care about being emotionally tickled. The Bible says that the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but what? They will have itching ears. And in doing so, they will look, they'll go out and seek and find people to tickle their ears. And that's what we have today. These emotional carnival barkers understand one thing, that you feed off of this, not you, but these people who are there at their churches, and particularly this church. So if they know that you are emotional and you want and you want an emotionally charged atmosphere, they're going to give you that because they know that you too don't value the word of God. That's also as insufficient as the word of God is to them. It's also to you people who attend these churches. And I say churches loosely because clearly this is not the body. What they want to do, and this is, guys, this is sales 101. They want to get you to shout. They want to get you to move because if you feel excited on the inside, then it doesn't matter what you see or what you hear. It matters what you feel. And feelings can be manipulated. And that's what he does. Sometimes God gives me the names of angels for other people. I know the names of most of my angels, but you just got assigned a new angel. The spelling is T-O-C-H-E. Lift up your hands. There's an angel standing in between me and you. So now here's a good example. Everyone's going through something. Everyone has an issue. Everyone has something that they don't want to deal with, a problem. And for some people, the bigger the problem, the more they are willing to listen to anything, the more desperate they may become. But then there's some folks who are just um, theologically, biblically, and emotionally immature. And so if I tell you that there's an angel there waiting to bless you and you need to come to it, well, you know what? If you tried everything else or if you're desperate or if you're just, again, biblically immature, you'll listen to them. It's 15 angels. to weaponize 15 people. Yeah, Y'all crazy. Hold on. Jesus. God, can I ask for some more uh, angels or something? Y'all some crazy folks. Now, oh God, are my guys ready? Oh Jesus. So I'm going to let my angels do what they do. But it's 15 angels with prayer assignments. So let me move out the way before y'all knock me over. Somebody move this stuff out of the way. 
Because in a second, 15 crazy people are about to run up here. Now. And I'm not going to touch you because, you know, I, I don't really do anything. But for these 15 people, God says the things that you are about to shift in this nation. Let me just, let me move out of the way. You're you going to keep me safe, right? Because they're going to try to trip on me. All right, here we go. Jeez, I feel sorry for those in the back because y'all. Y'all know the craziest people up here, right? All right, here we go. I didn't say go yet now. Yo, listen, listen. Some of y'all got one foot up. Now, don't play with this because these are very special angels. So when I count to three, oh, let me move out of the way. I keep forgetting these folks crazy because these my warriors. When I count to three, 15 of y'all run on the stage. I didn't count yet, so. One. Let me just look and see who's crazy. Woo! Ah! I didn't. Eh. I didn't say three. I'm just trying to see if y'all ready. Woo! Woo! Oh, these are big angels. Let me. One, two, three. Come on. Some of them are entering into trances. And they will be on special prayer assignments. But guess what? Their angels still walk in these pews right now. Hey, I said! There's angels walking these pews. And the fire is still falling. And the glory. So these Bible superheroes, these these church Avengers, they're going to go and they're going to wrestle. They're going to fight. They're going to do battle with uh, the unseen. You can't see them, but they can see them. And so trust in them. Now, ultimately, we know what's moving them, and that is going to be the financial rewards they get behind them, the fame, the fortune, the power that comes with uh, with them being entrusted with your spiritual well-being. That is, if you do indeed entrust them with your spiritual well-being. But what you need to know about you being a believer, if indeed you are a believer, is what is said here. And that is 1 John 5, 4. It says, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Did you see that? What overcomes the world? The faith of ours. And I want you to notice, hey, Nike, the victory, hey, Nike, Sasa, which is, this is a heiress active participle. So this is a, a continual thing. So the victory that has caused us to become and to maintain our victorious or our overcoming of the world is brought about. And so the victory that we receive, this victory in overcoming the world comes about by our faith not by the hands of this person, not by them speaking in tongues and laying on their hands and frothing at the mouth and having you run over, over each other to come find some imaginary angel. None of that stuff. Your victory, your overcoming is from your faith. The issue is though, they don't want you to know that. They want you to be subject to their lead.